Uh, welcome. Uh, I'd, I'd like to welcome all. Uh, thank you for being here in the hygiene and training class. So today, uh, I'm your facilitator for this program. My name is Pilani Mbonambi, uh, and, and, and I'm so grateful for being here, for you guys for being here. I also want to know you, uh, so that if maybe uh, you are to do the work, you need to have a person next to you, or maybe live where you are, then it's gonna be very easy uh, to find that person if they live next to you. So I'll, I'll start with the lady, ladies first, right? Uh, what is your name? Oh, my name is Avela Mungabe. Avela Mungabe. Where do you live, Avela? I live in Mzinyati. Mzinyati. Thanks to know you. Uh, uh, uh. My first Avela. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm Siam Zoom from Umlazi. From Umlazi. Uh, thank you so much, Siam. Uh, Over to you, brother. Um, I'm Andy Swazam from Chaswa. From Chaswa. Thank you so much, Andy Swazam. Hey uh, guys, uh, I know that since we are here, there are certain things that you need to understand. Uh, uh, unforeseen circumstances can happen. Each and every place that we live in, there are hazards everywhere. What are hazards are those things that can endanger ourselves. Okay? So, uh, there are certain things that I want to share with you. But other things that we we'll keep on sharing once, uh, since we are it's an ongoing process and it's an ongoing learning. So I would like to emphasize on these two things. I think there are two. If in case there's fire, we need to make sure that we don't use lift, but we use what? We will use our stairways, okay? So every sign is there. You will also know that each and every corner of our buildings, there are fire extinguishers installed there, okay? So, so we will train you as we go on how what is the evacuation process uh, until you reach the assembly area. Okay, so those are the things that I think they are very important for now. Over to you. Uh, so I want to know if, like, when do we do, when do we take the decision whether to use the stairs or to use the fire extinguisher? Uh, I think that is a very important question. Remember, if there's fire, you hear a, 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 a bell. If there's a bell, there are different bells, not the one that we use for amalgamation and place and stuff. But there is this one. Uh, that you still going to induct you on. When the uh, bell rings, you must know that you must evacuate the place, the area, and then until you, you find the assembly area, everyone should be there so that you can check, you can do a head count with who is not here and who is here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you will hear with the in the bell. Okay? I think if this is covered, uh, any questions regarding the safety? No questions. Thank you so much. Now, before we move, I want us to uh, to look at the break times. Very important, we need to take a break in each and everything that we do. So break times, uh, we will agree of the break times, okay? What time do we take uh, tea? What time do we take tea? Before we come to work or after? No, in the work. no, we are studying, then you take a break. What time do you think we can take a break? 10, how about 10? Yeah, I think, uh, all of us agree? 10? Yeah. They would 10, it's fine. Then when do we come back? 12. No, no, no. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Two times is normal. We'll take, let's say, it's, 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 it's about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, so 10 minutes. 15. Yeah, 15. Then what about uh, a lunch? Lunch? So this is tea? Tea and this is lunch? What time are we taking? Lunch could be at 12. 12. Do we all agree with 12? Past 12. Past 12 or 12? Past 12. Past 12. I think past 12 is fine. Uh, then when do we come back? Normally, I think it's fine if we can have at least 45 minutes for our break. Yeah. Or in an hour. I think 45 minutes is, is okay. So we're coming back at 13? 15. Perfect. We all sorted. We all help. I, I know that everyone has signed the register when they come in and and make sure that each and every time you attend, you sign the register. Okay, let's get to business of today. So business of today, uh, as you were applying for the leadership and uh, the hygiene and cleaning leadership. So basically today, uh, we're going to look at the things that you need to understand in order for you to become competent. Okay, 
So we are going to look at, this, at certain uh, um, outcomes. The first outcome that we are going to do is plan, prepare to wet the mop. I mean to, to wet mop floors. So we're going to do a mopping of floors. So once you understand how to plan and how to prepare for what the things that you need in order, what are the resources, what is the PPE that you need for you to be able to clean the floors. If I may ask, why do you need PPE in order for you to be able to perform your job? Or what is a PPE? What is a PPE? Protect, uh, pro personal protective equipment. Remember guys, when you use a personal protective equipment, you are trying to protect yourself. Remember you need ama chemicals. You need, uh, maybe there's dust, there are hazards that might endanger your health. So you need a, a PPE. So these are gloves to protect hands from chemicals and splinters. You need safety shoes. That is why you'll find maybe you've seen people who are wearing those safety shoes. They are trying to protect their feet so that uh, from slippery floors. Because once you mop the floors, if you are wearing a more protective clothing, you are you are able to balance whenever the floor is slippery. You need overalls. Yes, you are dressed um, under the over overalls, but you still need to protect the clothing that you. Uh, from dead, the, the clothing that you are already wearing uh, under the, the, the overall. And you still need to protect your skin as well. Overall, there are long sleeves. I get yes. when you are wearing a short sleeve. So you still need to protect your skin from chemicals, actually. You need a dust mask. During COVID, they were using, what do you call that mask? <laughs> I think there's a name for each and every mask. It's disposable. Disposable mask, this one. Mask. But you'll find people using a dust mask what during COVID. Do you remember? Yes. The one that is, I think it's big. It's different oh, from this one. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, you'll find people using. So you need to make sure you use a correct PPE for the correct job. Yeah, man? Do not use a PPE. You can't wear goggles or instead. Goggles are meant for another job. If you are cleaning, it's fine not to use goggles. Those big, uh, 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 in, what do they call it? Goggles. Goggles, okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, I think you understand now what personal protective equipment you need for you to mop the floors. We said you need gloves, you need safety shoes, you need overalls, you need a dust mask. Okay, let us, let us see what else do you need. So before you start your job, you need to prepare these things. Because, you know, okay, for this job, I'm going to choose this. Then next, uh, we are looking at the surfaces that require a wet mopping. Now, you're doing a planning here. Still remember? You're doing a planning, yeah. So since you are doing a planning, you need to realize now, keep in mind, what kind of surface Am I going to be performing this job on? Okay, I'm going to perform this job on hard floors. Hard floors, we're talking about here. Yeah. Amatites, granite, marble, terrazzo, quarry tiles, and so on and so on. There are different kinds of tiles. So if you are mopping the floors, you can't mop the floor outside. You can't mop outside. You can't mop a parking floors, surfaces. So we're talking about inside the houses. So there are different tiles, there are resident floors, which is vinyl, silk, wood. Use the correct equipment if you are mopping the floors. You know maybe if you are cleaning tiles, what kind of equipment you need? You need a mop. Yeah, and mops are also different. So you need to choose a correct equipment when you are to mop uh, the floors. But the second step is to choose a correct surface. Okay? Now you can choose them all. So they're different. I'm sorry about this part. <laughs> so we have a yarn mop, uh, they are different. We've got a dry mop uh, or a dust mop that we use just to clean the dust. We also have, okay, I think those are two kind of mop that we are 
let me deal with them to, uh, today, but there are others. You can refer from your learn account for other kinds of mock equipment that you might need. Sorry, sorry. Yes. What is a, a yard mop? A yard mop is the one that you, uh, uh, I think you press a camel or something, something like that. I think it's dry itself. <laughs> then another thing that is very important, guys. Since you will be doing your 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 practicals uh, at at the clients' uh, buildings, you need to know you under, you need to understand why is it important to take care of their furniture while you are there, because under other furniture they don't need water, so you are damaging the furniture if you are going to be doing that. So the reason why care and attention are given to avoid dating furniture. If you are sweeping the floors, if you are mopping, yes. Uh, so how are we going to realize if like, this specific furniture doesn't require any water? No, I think you know if furniture on its own, it's made of wood. It doesn't need water. Sure. Uh, so you need to make sure that when you mop, you are away of a, a, a wooden, wooden furniture. Sure. Yes. And even ama fittings or even ama cords, because you might not know ama ama electricity cords they are they are torn. If they are torn, they might endanger yourself. You might endanger yourself. So the best way to avoid dating the furniture during the mopping process is to remove the furniture completely. We've seen people who are doing spring cleaning. They they remove everything. They remove, they will remove the bed. They will remove the in what we call uh, a, a wardrobe outside so that they can clean the entire house. So does that mean even if like mm -hmm. it goes with a certain company, you have to remove all the No, not things. necessarily. If you can, then you can remove that. But in cases where you cannot, make sure that you you are away of those wooden uh, furniture. Yeah. So there's also the danger of damaging furniture and scattering pots when you are when you knock it with any mop. So in material that we use to uh, to design our mops, sometimes it can when 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 it go on the furniture, then it you can uh, you, you can also uh, damage any the furniture. So you need to make sure that you, you provide a professional uh, service as well. So that you maintain a professional level of service by treating the customer's furniture and building as if they are your own. So that is also important. Now, this is very important. Here's a person. You are cleaning, you are mopping the floor. So since you are mopping the floor, what happens? A person sleep and fall. What do you do? Remember, there's a procedure in the event of someone falling on the wet floor during the mopping process in terms of general safety regulations provided by occupational health and safety. That is why it is important to put um, a signs whenever you are mopping the floors. So that in case a customer comes in the shop or comes in the building, when they slip and fall, it's their fault. But if you did not put that sign, who would be held responsible? It's you. Okay, so if someone sleep and fall while you are working, first attend to the victim. Okay, if they are injured, keep them still until safety officer can come and assess their injuries. Do not attempt to move the victim because you might aggravate any injury. So once the victim is taken care of, make sure that you report the incident to your supervisor. And make sure when you report, you state that there was a sign. Okay. Immediately, do not wait until the end of your shift. You will probably be required to complete a form to report the incident. Okay. So, why, guys, all floors that have been worked more must be checked? So, you must be asking yourself. You have more before this. Uh, you are required to, to tell the customer that you are done. Then the customer will come and check. But first of all, you need your supervisor to come and check if you have thoroughly mopped the floors or it's thoroughly clean. So to ensure the level of cleanliness 
it's in accordance with the website procedure and basically the principal always make sure that there's someone who's going to check then the customer check it is the requirement of big best diner that the customer must come and check and sign that you have cleaned the floors and the floors are clean okay then now you are done what do you do with the waste that you are using remember you are mopping the floors you have dirty water here see and what do you do with that dispose of that mop water in the toilet put that water in the toilet it is better place to put something that might have a solid sediments and you won't have any dirty things the company that you work at must have a designated area to get rid of any waste remember you cannot just dump waste anywhere because of environmental issues remember we still have animals who are, who are living in this environment we still have plants to take care of so when you dispose water with chemicals you might destroy any our environment so dumping the water on the grass or the garden will kill it so that is very important okay and another question that you should ask yourself, why all equipment, consumables and chemicals used for wet, uh, wet mopping floors must be removed, cleaned and stored? I know some of us, when they use the mop, they just take, they just put it anywhere. You still need to rinse the mop, make it clean, so that in the next day you are able to use it. Okay? To maintain it clean and keep it in good condition. You need to clean all the bucket, all the, um, all the mop that you are using. Okay, and make sure, guys, electrical accidents uh, through poor connections or frayed cords on a vacuum cleaner, poorly maintained equipment may also cause damage, and, uh, and the area being cleaned. So, if you did not clean your vacuum cleaner, what's going to happen in the next job? You are killing it because it's still full of the dirt of the previous. Dead. so you are killing it if you are using a mop that you did not rinse in the uh, from the previous day then the the floors that you're going to be cleaning now they're gonna be dead and when they're not gonna be uh, clean so that is very important then let us look at the problems and damage that can occur during uh, the wet of mop accident and personal injury damage missing equipment and personal Protective equipment, insufficient or incorrect chemicals. Sometimes you might have ama problems when you are about to start your job. Number one, you'll find that equipment is missing. There's no packet. There are few packets. You might not be able to complete your job. Two, consumables. That your lack of consumables. Then you don't have a PPE, you don't have gloves and stuff. You don't have uh, maybe there are cut ties. There are cracked windows. If you are cleaning the windows, you still need to report all that. Don't start a job without a PPE. Don't start a job without proper consumables. You don't start a job when the tiles are cracked. You still need to report that so that you can perform a job that is uh, up to standard. Okay. So you need to use a personal protective equipment when using. Okay. So now that takes us that takes us to the end of cleaning off and mopping what the floors any questions so now i'll open the questions to the class any questions so far no questions so now this is so in this session we're going to talk about this only then tomorrow we will continue with the other uh, kind of cleanings tomorrow we'll be doing cleaning using a disc uh, Tomorrow we'll be using, uh, you will be looking at using a single disc machine. Okay, so this put us to the end of our session. So we start doing our workbook. Thank you so much.